And for people joining uh, later, I'll admit them into uh, the main room here. But uh, so happy to see everyone. Um, this is our second event in the Future of Mobility series uh, that we're doing together, Mobility X Lab, Business Sweden, and AI Sweden, as I represent. My name is Peter Kurzweli, and I am AI Sweden's representatives normally in Canada. But right now, I'm in Gothenburg here for two more weeks, uh, waiting to get over once again. And the reason we're doing this uh, Future of Mobility series, but also uh, this innovation series, is really to open up for Canadian uh, and global startups to have a way in towards the uh, European and Scandinavian and Swedish corporate side. So this is our way of sourcing innovation and sourcing innovative startups from around the globe. And this series has a focus on the Canadian ecosystem. Um, today's agenda is uh, really, and the main reason you're here is that uh, to meet some of the, our biggest corporates and also to hear from Sanna uh, representing uh, Mobility X Lab about their program. I will do a short introduction about why we're working with startups and, and what AI Sweden is. Then Sana will uh, follow that with a presentation of uh, Mobility X Lab and the program. And they, the program only are, is only open now for two more weeks to apply. So this is really exciting. Uh, and it's a really great opportunity to meet with some of the most prominent Swedish corporates in the automotive and connectivity sector. Then Shafik uh, will present SEFT and their main challenges and why they are looking for innovation. And then Agneta and Johannes will hold a presentation about Ericsson and why innovation is so important from Ericsson. Uh, last but not least, Caleb will present the opportunities coming from Canada, looking towards Sweden and, and really build how we're building a stronger bridge there between the two countries. And then in the end, we'll uh, wrap everything up with a Q&A session. Um, but as I said, my name is Peter Kurzweli and I represent an organization called AI Sweden. And we are really here to accelerate the use of AI in Sweden. And our main mission is accelerating the use of uh, AI to benefit our society, our competitiveness and everyone living in Sweden. We are working with over 130 partners here in Sweden and to really strengthen the Swedish AI ecosystem, we understand that we need to work elsewhere as well. We need to work in some of the, the main and strongest ecosystems in the world because we are a national center for AI. So we're working with uh, research, we're working with corporates, we're working with small and medium-sized enterprises and academic institutions. And we really need uh, to, to be a neutral player in this ecosystem to be able to help our partners accelerate uh, AI. Uh, so these are some of our partners and some of them uh, you will meet here today amongst them Seft and Ericsson of course and the reason we are doing this series and the reason why we're in Canada is to that Canada has a fantastic AI ecosystem since um, you guys started investing in AI over 30 years ago and from an AI Sweden perspective it's really important for us to build stronger bridges because we know that this development that, that this is a this acceleration we're talking about is not possible without partnerships so we also want to inspire and engage our partners with what we are doing outside of sweden as well and i know this is shared with mobility x lab it is shared by uh, our corporates so this is our way of trying to help the both uh, ecosystems in understanding how we can learn from each other and work with each other. And just a month ago, we teamed up with, or it became official that we are now a official partner to the Mila, the Quebec AI Institute in Montreal, uh, founded by Joshua Benjo. So there, that's the place where we have our regional presence in Canada, but we are working all over Canada. Um, so, and I'm basically the runner. So if you have any questions about the Swedish AI ecosystem, about our corporates, about what they're looking for, feel free to reach out so that we can help you connect with them. Because the interesting thing is that, uh, and this is the, the global uh, Tortoy AI index, is that Canada is a fantastic AI ecosystem, but what we do have in Sweden is that we have amazing corporates. 
States, we have amazing multinational. Even though we're a nation of 10 million people, we fostered some of the, the most innovative companies in the world in terms of, of being multinationals over a range, a wide range of different sectors. And for them to stay competitive, uh, they and we understand that we can build bridges towards other innovative ecosystems so that they can keep up and, and stay competitive also in, in the near future. Um, so I'm just gonna let that in. Uh, so our main focus areas being in Canada is definitely building ecosystem to ecosystem collaborations, building uh, also strategic areas and, and research areas together with some of the most prominent um, academic institutions in the world. It's knowledge sharing and ho on how to apply AI. And then it's scouting, it's sourcing of startups. And one of our partners uh, in the sourcing process is definitely Mobility X Lab that you will hear more about from Sana. Um, so with that said, um, this is our uh, map. This is who we are representing. And uh, this is uh, the companies we want to help you access if you have innovative solutions that are uh, relevant to them. Uh, it's a wide range from smart manufacturing to life science to the connectivity and the main focus of today, mobility. Uh, so with that said, Sana, Sana, I would like to welcome you up on the digital stage to present Mobility Exam. Thank you very much, Peter. Um, so my name is Sana Moore. And I work as project manager at Mobility X Lab, and I would like to take this sort of next 15 minutes or so to introduce you to what I think is the most exciting offer to startups in uh, mobility and connectivity. And I'll, I'll try to share my screen here. It's funny and when you well, test it, everything yeah. works. Now, so Mobility X Lab is an uh, innovation hub in Gothenburg, and Gothenburg being uh, Sweden's second largest city. Um, and we're founded by six of the leading industry companies Sept, Ericsson, Vioneer, Volvo Group, Volvo Cars, and Sensact. And last week, we announced that Polestar. Uh, joined Mobility X Lab. So now we have seven partners, all in all. And we believe in innovation through collaboration. Uh, Mobility X Lab offers young companies with pioneering ideas within mobility and connectivity the opportunity to access the network and accelerate through a strategic partnership with our partner companies. We also enable uh, projects in between the partners. And we do this by creating a platform for collaboration, a space and a culture of openness and trust. Four years ago, Mobility Exla was founded when the CEOs of uh, these six at that time, uh, big industry companies came together and said that, well, maybe startups should be part of the innovation work that we do here. And during these four, four nearly four and a half years now, uh, a lot has happened. Uh, one thing is that the industry has changed the way they innovate. Uh, today, they say that partnership is the new leadership and that only together we can create sustainable solutions for future mobility. And working with startups is now an integrated part of our partners' innovat innovation work and that collaboration is needed for them to be in the forefront of development, uh, to be competitive and to achieve their goals. And at Mobility X Lab, our mission is to find the very best startups in the world to come and work together with our partner companies. Uh, Volvo Group is the largest company in Sweden, uh, about 100,000 employees. Uh, they make uh, trucks, buses, construction equipment, and industrial applications for marine and logistics solutions. Uh, Martin Lundstedt is their CEO. And um, about the Volvo Group's uh, partnership with Mobility X Lab, he says that only together we can create even better conditions for development, entrepreneurship, and growth. And we think that the word together is key in this uh, context. 
So what we really do, uh, well, on one side, you have the uh, big corporates, the industry partners. These are successful Swedish industry companies with the world as their market. And on the other side, you have the small, uh, fast startups with new ideas and new techniques, fresh thinking and disruptive technologies or business models. They need each other. And Mobility X Lab try to bridge that gap. Our founding partners have recognized that in an ideal world, you uh, combine the punch of an elephant with the speed of a cheetah. And in other words, you combine a big corporate with emerging startups. So we offer uh, basically startups the opportunity to accelerate by strategic partnerships with now seven global players within mobility and connectivity. And as I said before, uh, Sevd, Ericsson, Polestar, Visioneer, Volvo Cars, Volvo Group, and Sensac are partners to Mobility X Lab. Mobility X Lab is situated in Gothenburg at Lindholmen. This used to be an old shipyard. Uh, now we call it uh, the Swedish Silicon Valley or Mobility Valley. Um, and we're just steps away from our partners. Uh, Sevt uh, recently built their uh, European innovation hub uh, just two houses away from us. And we're just a few steps away from uh, all our partners, more or less. Uh, so this is a very uh, unique and innovative environment to be part of. And working with innovation is uh, not only about the companies themselves, but also who you've access to and who you collaborate with. And where else but in Mobility X Lab setting can you actually access and work with uh, seven big industry companies at the same time? And this is Erdjad Andersson. She's the CEO of our partner Sensact. Um, she says that pioneering future mobility, it happens when big players with their perspectives are mixed up with startups, speed and agility. Um, Sensac, uh, they're a software company aiming to preserve lives by accelerating the transition to zero collisions with the help of autonomous driving technology. And we are here to uh, pioneer future mobility. And as you know, there are four megatrends affecting the uh, automotive industry, uh, electrification, autonomous drive, connectivity, and shared mobility. So pioneering future mobility, it happens when you mix up big players with startups. The um, uniqueness of Mobility X Lab is the closeness to our partners that we are in the same ecosystem. And together with the startups, we create an even larger ecosystem. Uh, all of us committed to help find and develop future mobility and connectivity solutions, uh, working together and sharing knowledge to make things happen. Uh, we're a, a large group of people uh, engaged in Mobility X Lab. We have our steering board, uh, makes up of uh, senior management representatives from each partner companies. Um, they help us with the um, with the positioning of Mobility X Lab and also the commitment from the partners uh, into Mobility X Lab. Uh, we have our management team highly committed and involved in everything from screening startups to uh, developing the innovation program that we run, and they meet every week. We have the uh, Markham representatives, you will later hear from Johannes Schüge. Um, they make sure that we are visible in media. And this is very important for us, how we attract startups, but also as an, as an offer to our startups that we bring the startups out together with us in the world. And also our 100 person strong team of partner leads, that's the experts working deep into the R&D processes together with the startups in our program, making magic happen in validation projects or in proof of concepts. And uh, last but not least, the very small but committed Mobility X Lab team. Uh, we have Katarina, our director, who also was uh, 
in the founding part of Mobility X Lab four and a half years ago. We have Susanna, our collaboration manager, Marie, communications officer, uh, Johanna takes care of the office, and I work as a senior project leader. And then we'll have two new uh, colleagues joining us later this spring. Uh, so what we offer uh, startups is, of course, um, the possibility to collaborate with seven leading industry partners and also the potential commercial partnership. That's sort of the goal of the program um, that you get a Mobility X Lab team as a deep single point uh, contact and access into the partners. You get dedicated industry lead and mentor. And also that you get a minimum of two partners in collaboration to start with, because this is the requirement for entering the Mobility X Lab program that a minimum of two partners say, yes, we want to work with this startup. We also offer from Mobility X Lab side uh, a structured collaboration model. That's our program uh, in which we have gates and uh, checkpoints. I'll show you that later. Uh, you get full project support, of course, from Mobility X Lab. Uh, through our Marcom, you get increased, increased visibility and exposure. Uh, and the unique thing is that we don't take any fee from startups. We don't take any equity. We are fully funded by our partners. And we work on behalf of our partners to find the world's best startups. Um, you get through Mobility X Lab, a global network connecting with our alumni startups. And then there's uh, contributors that will hand a, a goodie bag of uh, services provided. Uh, last but not least, we say that it happens when we meet. And last night, we had uh, one of the first mingles here uh, since COVID um, uh, made us stay at home. And it is magic when we meet, because then you get introduced to uh, new uh, industry leads with our partners. And that's when magic can happen. Um, <clears throat> so, um, sorry, um, the uh, program itself is um, six and can be extended up to 12 months, depending on the progress of the project. And we have two application periods per year. Uh, Peter mentioned that we uh, have two, two weeks now until deadline for batch nine, which we are um, recruiting to. Um, in the last application, we had uh, just over 100 applications and we had 31 startups pitching. The program is designed in uh, three phases and it's very similar to dating. So you start with the discover phase where you, uh, you, you try to match your, the startups offer with the requirements of uh, the partner companies. Then some move into a validation phase, and here's where you do the proof of concept. A few make it all the way to acceleration phase, and that's where the commercial contract is at stake. Uh, we think that everyone in the program is a winner because you gain valuable insight from working together. Um, we facilitate from Mobility X Lab side with application screening, pitches, and selection. Uh, we have a kickoff. Uh, we meet every partner and startups in uh, three checkpoints over the six month, and then there's a graduation. We also host, and we hope to do this in person. Everything has been online, as you, you know, for the past two years, but we hope to meet in person for Tech Day in September this year. Um, so this is our scoreboard, and we're very proud of the startups and corporates that uh, what they accomplished so far. So we've been uh, in operations for four years, and so far we have uh, 486 startups from 50 countries that applied to Mobility X Lab. Uh, when it started in 2017, uh, we had 12 startups applied, uh, 12 startups pitched, and they were all from Gothenburg. So we now have a, a, a sort of a global outreach to it, and we're happy to be in Canada today. Uh, we listened to 151 startups pitching, and that's the highlight for us all. Um, so far, we run eight batches. We call each program for a batch, and we do that twice a year. So batch number eight, and as I said, we're now recruiting for batch number nine. 
Uh, we've had 69 startups in our program so far. 37 of them made it to validation phase, and that's where you do the validation projects of uh, your uh, solution or technique. And 12 times we've seen an acceleration. That's a commercial contract between a partner and a startup. Um, more important is that the 37 startups made validation projects. They together made 72 proof of concept. And because you get a minimum of two uh, partners to start with. Uh, being part of Mobility X Labs program is attractive for our startups and they use it as a proof of uh, value for them when um, looking for venture capital. And our startups have raised more than 646 US dollars so far. Uh, we're very happy uh, for them in that respect. This is the uh, family photo. Um, we have startups from Sweden, Singapore, Canada, US, Israel, Finland, uh, Belgium, U UK, and many more countries. And they work in various fields, uh, such as electromobility, connectivity, AI, uh, software, hardware. Uh, their common quality is that they are among the best in their field. Uh, in our um, last batch, we had two startups working in the interface between uh, life science and mobility. And that is a new thing in solutions um, referring to um, to the next generation of mobility. Uh, what if you could do drug detection in the car? How many lives would that save? Uh, that's very intriguing, of course. Uh, for the batch nine, uh, which we're now recruiting for, and that will start in the autumn, uh, here's what our partners are looking for. Uh, within uh, electromobility, they're looking for solutions in energy management, uh, route planning, grid service, second life service, charging solutions, in-cabin tech could be solutions on how to create an optimal experience and introduce new ways on how a rider or driver can interact with the vehicle and the goods that it transports. Within autonomous enablers, that will be uh, new techniques uh, ranging from computer vision to sensor fusion, AI modeling and driver monitoring uh, assistance systems to embedded cybersecurity solutions, for example. Within connectivity, we're looking for solutions that make the vehicle connect to a cloud and with 5G as a key enabler. Within smart transport systems, we're looking for innovative solutions that sort of go beyond uh, existing rideshare apps. Um, more information about the focus areas uh, can be found on mobilityxlab.com, but we did host uh, reverse partner pitches, and these are so unique experiences to find out what's going on inside our partner company's uh, R&D um, innovation work. Uh, we recorded it, so if you missed those sessions, please just send me an email, sana.more, mobilityxlab.com, and I will send you a link, and then you'll hear our partners expressing their needs within each area. So just email me, and deadline for uh, the uh, application is 27th of March. And I put here all the key dates. Um, after deadline, uh, our partners will screen and select those that um, those startups that I would like to hear in a pitch. Um, so that's the 20th of April deadline, and you'll uh, hear from us on the 21st of April. Pitch week is from uh, uh, 2nd to 6th of May, and then in June we'll announce which startups that will join. Uh, the program will start in August, and then there will be a graduation in February, and uh, it's 2023. It sounds so very weird to say that year. Um, and please follow our journey. Uh, we're on lots of websites and social media, and I really hope that I see you here at Lindholmen uh, someday and that you join us in uh, pioneering future mobility. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sana. We did get an interesting question, I think, from, from Patrick at 
uh, nylon sense. Uh, and I want to emphasize that uh, that mobility is significantly impacted by decisions made by governments and municipalities with laws, rules, and access to infrastructure. How do you at Mobility Extra Lab address that aspect of mobility in your organization? Do you collaborate with the city, municipality, region, or, or the government? Uh, our partners do so very much, of course. Uh, they take part in large infrastructure um, projects related to uh, building grid services, of course. Um, Volvo cars will have all their cars electric by 2030. Volvo Group will have their vehicles electric by 2040. Uh, SEVT is working with electric uh, cars. Polestar is 100% electric. So, of course, we need to work together with uh, cities uh, and um, to work on the grid, for example. Uh, so our partners do so, but we don't exclusively do that in the Mobility X Lab setting. Um, so, so, and, and Patrick, I, as a representative from Lindholm and Science Park as well, and AI Sweden, I want to emphasize that the area where Mobility X Lab has its home, the, the physical area, is basically a test bed for mobility. Uh, so uh, having a very big dependent on the automotive and uh, mobility industry overall in Gothenburg and in the west of Sweden, Lindholm and Science Park, who is the owner of AI Sweden as a project and Mobility X Lab, works very closely with the region. Uh, so, for example, there's been autonomous buses driving around there. Uh, there was one of the first sites or the first site that got electric buses. Um, there's now a test bed for um, no docks uh, recharging of cars. So um, we work very closely with our region, with the municipalities and um, the the one the, the agencies really regulating laws and so on. So, so it's a very close connection, I would say. Um, great with questions. Thank you so much. <laughs> Outside my window today is wireless charging of taxi cars that are testing here. Yeah. Uh, it's really fun to be here in the middle of everything, every innovation going on uh, in this area. And thank you so much, Sana. You will be with us for the Q&A as well. Uh, but with that said, I want to welcome up on the digital stage once again, uh, Shafiq uh, Uraman from SEFT, who will talk a little bit or present uh, what SEFT is doing and how that they resonate and relate to Mobility uh, Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Sana, for a really good introduction of Mobility X Lab. Uh, I am uh, AI technical lead within CVT, it's called SEFT. And uh, I, will, I will try to share my screen if technology allows uh, and see what happens. I hope you can see my screen till now. And uh, I'll give some brief introduction. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. So it must be CVT written on that one? Yes. Because I cannot see my screen myself. I don't know why. But so uh, SEFT is uh, an innovation and development company, which is forefront of the mobility. And uh, we work with modular development and uh, from groundbreak, uh, you know, software development and continuous inno innovation in hardware, actually. And uh, we are one of the world leading innovation center within Geely Group. So if I give a brief history of CVT, it is also from startup to scale up or something like that in between. So we have, uh, uh, we, have we were founded in 2018, I think so, uh, 2013. And uh, we, we are around 2000 people, 30 nationalities. Uh, we are, uh, we delivered to our customers within Geely. For example, you have heard of Volvo cars, name of Volvo car, or you have heard of Lotus race car, you have maybe heard of Lincoln Co. So we deliver our project to these brands within, within, within our uh, family. And uh, we are located in Gothenburg, actually. And uh, we have our startup hubs in Israel and Finland. Uh, so this is briefly our background. As I said, uh, our motto is to create a mobility solution for different tomorrow. And we are responsible for, you know, developing mobility solution for the future. 
uh, creating an excellent center within our family and also supporting the EU brand like Link and Co uh, and then coming new Zika in the uh, US and in, in Europe life cycle for that one. So key technologies, everybody are working with that, nothing new actually. And our vision is as similar as Sana has mentioned to you that we are looking for the new innovation and key technology in these areas. So if we see some of our background, how we grew up, so you will see that we have developed one of electrical, uh, some one of the platform, uh, automotive platform, which is called uh, CMA actually, and it is one of the most sold within our, you know, within our group actually. It's more, it's, this figure is old, it's around 1 million now. And if you see, uh, uh, it is used in different vehicle, uh, different vehicle categories. And if you see any XC40 or Link and Co or Geometry and so on and so forth, so they are built on the same uh, you know, uh, CMA platform, which is built and developed within CVT and, you know, our CVT engineers, Seft engineers has built that one. And on the, it's not only elect, you know, the architecture company, we also do a complete vehicle as well, which is on the road in Europe right now. It is called Link and Co. And uh, yeah, it has an impressive figure to be a new brand. And we have, uh, last year we have launched during COVID even, you know, we learned this here in, in, in Europe as well. And uh, yeah, I, I strongly encourage to, to look at this and see what we have created. Similarly, if we go to more inside of the car, if you look at the gearbox, that is more than 1 million car being used, which is the only 7 DCT gearbox which has been developed in SEFT as a project. So these are different projects which SEFT has done. And uh, we have also worked with the hybrid 70 uh, CT version, you know, this electrical architecture working on that one, which is basically modular. And we are working with EV, electrical vehicle complete uh, EV, more or less now. And uh, this is our past and this is our future, actually. Maybe you have heard of a company, Vemo. And uh, they have recently, because we don't announce our products, our you know customer announced us more or less so you will not see seft brand anywhere you will see volvo advertising something which is being developed in seft or maybe zika or maybe link and co so we are r d center on behind so similarly one of our customer has uh, done in the beginning of this year that they will have a robo taxi which will be developed by zika another brand and this brand is basically seft which will develop complete vehicle more or less in for them as well. So as I said, I cannot tell more of our projects, but this can give you a glimpse in our past and in our future. And hopefully in future, you will also see our different customer uh, will announce that what new products we are building for uh, together with world leading companies are alone by yourself for the customers. When it comes to the AI, because I am a technical lead for CVT, and my job is to take care of artificial intelligence technology. And uh, this I see from quite obvious from here. It is not only asset development and R&D, but it is goes all the way to asset disposal. When say asset is a mobility asset, from R&D to customer handling, booking, purchasing, giving them lifetime, maintenance, and all the way. So this is artificial intelligence goes from one direction to all the direction. Our artificial technologies are being uh, employed for this one. One of the example I normally give in this sense, if you see only for R&D, asset R&D development, you can see it's quite obvious beside autonomous drive I'm talking about that we can use for up energy optimization, user insurance optimization, safety, sa security, and so on and so forth. A lot of things we can do, as you know, uh, only for asset. And if we go a little bit inside the asset, one of the asset is our battery, our electrical architecture, or it's called electrical powertrain. And today, as you can see, one state of health and state of charge, we, here you can see different algorithms in within 
AI machine learning, especially deep learning, we are employing today. So you can see the market is quite big for artificial intelligence technologies. Uh, and similarly, even you don't see very obvious, but if you have a car, so there should be a, some material, which is basically coming from um, maybe biodegradable material or new different plastic, PPP, PBB plastic, and so on and so forth. So artificial intelligence has already reduced the time from 10 year to 20 year to 18 months actually. So we can easily, so this is some examples I normally give that AI from the smaller scale to larger scale, we can choose artificial intelligence. Here are, we are employing some of the artificial intelligence technology. And here I copied some of those actually where we, which we're looking forward to employ AI technologies. And the uh, essence is that we want to control TCO, total cost of ownership, that is called price, time, and improve the user experience. So whenever we use artificial intelligence related technologies, basically in our automotive or in our mobility solution, we have three parameters, how it will improve the user experience at the end of the day, and how it will control the price and the time to market. So this is basically small AI thing. I think I will uh, stop here. And if there are some questions, I welcome all of them now, actually. So I did not talk about mobility and startup because Sana and Peter has done quite good job. So I cannot uh, justify adding more on that one. Thank you so much, uh, Shafiq. Um, I think uh, you will be with us to the end um, yeah. uh, to the Q and A session as well. So I think uh, we can save some some questions for later. Uh, but it's really I want to emphasize that it's really interesting to see uh, Seft as a player because you you represent so many different type of um, industry like industrial leaders in the space. So you basically cover the entire stack. Uh, of the needs for for manufacturers for the experience within uh, the future mobility so you're a really really interesting player in the field and from one interesting player to uh, the other i want to welcome up um, uh, johannes and agneta who will talk a bit about what ericsson uh, is doing and how ericsson is working together with mobility x lab so please turn on your cameras What's welcome up? thank you thank you uh so i will uh, do the most of the talking now and then we welcome everyone to talk to us in the end of the presentation like you said uh, first off i'm gonna send a few links so that everyone gets them and i decided not to play a video right now because we don't have that much time so let me share my screen uh, here we go are you seeing what i'm seeing yes we are Yes, great. Okay, so my name is Johannes Schuigge and I work in uh, Ericsson Connected Vehicles team uh, with marketing. And with me, I also have Agneta Sandberg, who is the head of Solution Architects. And uh, so thank you all for coming to listen to us. Uh, we have been members of uh, Mobility X Lab for quite some time and, and, and gotten to know really interesting startups on the way. Uh, myself, I actually have been working in a startup, the self-driving uh, electric truck company called Enride. Maybe some of you have heard about it. And I was participating in several several um, accelerator programs, uh, which have some similarities to Mobility X Lab. But I would just once again want to say that it's a fantastic opportunity to to get into organizations and to get to know interesting people to both improve your own product, but also get a network that you could never realize that and also a network with the other startups uh, in the in the program, so uh, I hope you all uh, apply later on. Uh, I'm just going to tell you briefly about the automotive space or my perspective. So there's both the high volume uh, domain where we have the private cars, we have lots of apps and services that everyone wants to use, and that's very much a, um, a global perspective uh, where where the automakers are interested in and in driving down cost and complexity for these. Uh, large-scale operations and at the same time we have these uh, enride similar or or public bus uh, scenarios where you have larger amounts of data volumes uh, you have 
more local uh, trials, but bandwidth and latency are interesting concepts. So the connectivity aspect there is, is rather on, on those aspects where the connectivity aspect here is making sure that everything's working all the time for the customer experience. And Ericsson uh, is not only an automotive, and, and some of you might know Ericsson as the mobile phone company, but mobile phones is just an effect of us connecting the whole infrastructure. And, uh, and have, we have been in the connecting industry since 150 years back. So we are, we are active in so many different industries. And everything that move, that's moving really is something that we like. And everything that has a SIM card is also something that we like. And, some of you know this and some of you might not know this, but even devices like the scooters uh, that you are riding uh, on your private time has SIM cards and some of them are industry grade or uh, industry usage uh, SIM cards and some of them are more uh, regular everyday person cellular SIM cards. But even so, they need to work and you need to jump between operators and you need to imp improve uh, the quality of service in a lot of different aspects. And even on the factory floor, there's a lot of things happening on connectivity end of things. So either you have autonomous vehicles running in the factory or you do VR or uh, um, virtual reality or AR solutions on the factory floor, which sometimes require high uh, connectivity uh, um, quality and low latency, or you, you connect your tools so you get more insights on, on how the production was made. Uh, but but mine and Agneta's favorite topic is how do we bring value to automakers that have millions and millions of cars in in different countries around the world, and and, and that and that is a big task. There are so many things to consider. This image uh, I'm using is a new image uh, I just created uh, on the topic of over-the-air updates, and it's a great entry point of showing that. With, the, with a software-defined car, it means that the cars are becoming like the mobile phone today. They need to be updated all the time with new apps, new updates, uh, security fixes, and uh, regional uh, changes that only apply in Dubai or only apply in Finland or in, in Canada. Um, so there's so much to keep track of for the automaker, and, and we help with that. So we, as Ericsson, we simplify the connected uh, experience or the connected services in this software defined vehicle era. And when you need to send updates all over uh, or the, all the time to these cars, you need to be on the cellular net because tr tr cars are generally in traffic a lot of, of the time. And, um, and that is a, a software challenge to send the right updates at the right, uh, um, yeah, the right parts of code and, and just managing all that for a lot of different vehicle models uh, with a lot of different components. But at the same time, it's a connectivity aspect. So when is the right time to send an update? When is the cost low or high? Um, how do we make sure that there is coverage for that car to get the whole download down? So a lot of interesting perspectives here. But naturally, we want to talk to startups and get to know startups who are interested in many of these topics here that I have highlighted. So telematics, for example, means opening and closing doors for cars or, or providing services to a car or a vehicle, even though you're far away. Um, service innovation is all about the third party applications and improving the customer experience uh, in a digital interface, because nowadays car manufacturers and truck manufacturers are interacting with the end user, but through digital interfaces. So it's a new chapter for them, or even in terms of how long they've been on the market and they've been uh, hardware uh, focused for a long time, but here we are in a software defined chapter. And of course, cybersecurity in this type of domain is extremely important because these are high, highly complex devices and they need to be uh, the most secure uh, in everything we do, regardless if we're talking cloud, inside the vehicle or connecting to the network. So just wanted to throw some of those uh, words out there. But uh, other than that, please read up on, on this website and uh, looking forward to your application and looking forward to a brief discussion in the end of this uh, panel that we are all in. Thank you.
Thank you so much, uh, Johannes. And it really uh, emphasizes also what we talked about in the first event when we talked about future mobility, that the cars and the mobility industry is more coming, uh, becoming like the telecommunication industry. It's becoming platforms rather than, than cars and buses. Uh, so thank you so much. And you'll be with us both, um, Agneta and Johannes. Uh, but first, we want to welcome up Caleb. Um, that will explain why Canadian and, and how Canadian companies can come to Sweden and how we can collaborate. And you are muted, Kim. Sorry about that. Hi, everyone. There we go. <laughs> It's um, so great to be presenting again. Um, really excited to be taking on this topic. And um, wow, today's presentations were really interesting. Um, so I, I see that we are running a little bit short on time, so I'm going to try and be quick. Um, a few of you might remember me from our last uh, presentation, but I work with Business Sweden, and our objective is to help Swedish companies expand internationally and increase their revenue but we also help domestic companies internationally find investment opportunities in Sweden. So um, I personally, I'm Canadian and I'm stationed here in Toronto um, and we help Canadian companies evaluate Sweden and find investment opportunities. Um, and we, we work in, in a great number of different industry sectors, but transportation, mobility and artificial intelligence are definitely some very interesting ones for us. Um, a really high level topic, but one that I feel quite comfortable taking on is uh, the compatibility of Canadian and Swedish companies. Now, um, on this screen, we can see some statistics about, um, about Sweden and um, its rankings in terms of some very interesting commercial indexes. Now, Canada, of course, ranks quite well on a lot of these. Um, so the countries are, are paired really well in terms of their business culture and innovation levels. Um, and we see that now, especially in terms of what is uh, happening in terms of economic reintegration internationally, and a bit of the, uh, the state of the world that a lot of Canadian companies are, are taking that thought process and saying, okay, where in Europe is an interesting place for me? And where is business culture going to be similar? Where can we integrate? Well, Sweden is definitely one of those countries that gets evaluated quite, quite thoroughly, and we're happy about that. Um, and if you want some, um, some business cases on it actually happening, here's quite a few. I thought that this is just a, a terrific way of thinking about who's coming to Sweden and why. Well, here's a few brands that have come to Sweden recently, um, and I'm sure that you recognize a few of them on the screen. Very happy to say that us at Business Sweden, we've touched a lot of these companies along the way, um, be it from a very high level strategic positioning, um, those kinds of conversations about expansion and, and why Sweden, um, but also on a, a shorter level um, or a, um, a more direct level in terms of partnerships or evaluations of Swedish companies and why, um, why or perhaps why not they might be a good partner. And that really is um, some of the most important questions to ask yourself when you're thinking about expanding your business to Europe or expanding your business to Sweden is what is those business, what are those business opportunities? Um, where do we see growth in terms of uh, being able to, to take our business and develop it on the European market? It's some really interesting questions. And what we can do for you at Business Sweden is help you try and answer some of those market questions if you have them um, or take a fairly neutral conversation about about Sweden and about the different opportunities that might be available. So that's what we do and I do want to say to any Canadian companies who are on the line right now that you are very welcome to reach out to me if you want to just talk Sweden or if you want to <laughs> talk about um, investments because these are the kinds of conversations that we have quite frequent frequently with Canadian companies so uh, we want to take those conversations on and we want to be able to, to chat with you. So you're very welcome to reach out to me. Um, and here are my contact details. <laughs> um, okay, very, very brief. I think I saved us some good, some good minutes to be able to have a question period there, Peter. 
Thank you so much, Caleb. Um, yeah, that was brief, but very informative. Um, so uh, we want to open up for questions. You can either use the chat or just turn on your camera. Uh, it could be a question for, for Sanna. It could be a question about uh, AI Sweden's presence in, in Canada. It could also be for, for Shafik and uh, Sefta and Agneta and Johannes from Ericsson. So do we have uh, any questions about um, connectivity about the startup program from Biltex Lab or uh, how to collaborate with Swedish corporates. Uh, we got a question from, from Arnold here. Are any of the groups here involved in, in off-highway construction, forestry, mining, agriculture, or defense vehicle uh, autonomy applications? And um, yes, uh, we are, or and we have. Uh, for example, Ericsson. Ericsson is providing a very broad spectra, and maybe Agneta or um, Johannes, you could dive deeper into that. No, but uh, the, the, the short answer is that we have something called dedicated or private 5G networks, and those are used for construction, forestry, mining, AG, ETC, because uh, that's where the demands might be higher, and that's where you could use self-driving vehicles. So we install private 5G nets in those areas. Um, super. Um, and I also want to say, Arnold, that we will, this is a series, so we will also go over into other sectors uh, outside of the mobility sector um, in just, yeah, next months and the, the months coming here. So this is a series of monthly events where we get to meet uh, Swedish corporates and there's a lot of forestry and mining in, in the north of Sweden. We have some really, really interesting actors also within construction and we will also do smart manufacturing and smart uh, industry. So industry 4.0. Um, do we have any other questions? Uh, otherwise I do have a question for, for Agneta and Johannes. Uh, so I think we can start with that. So uh, in the work you're doing, uh, Agneta and Johannes, uh, how, um, how are you viewing startups? What's your perspective on startups and startups helping Ericsson drive innovation? Yeah, maybe I can start on that one. Uh, I work a lot with R&D at Ericsson and Ericsson is a company that has a, a very strong history in uh, doing new innovations and uh, doing new, finding new ways in new areas. Uh, so so we, we, we very much appreciate getting new ideas, uh, feeling that we, we know um, what's going on, what trends are ongoing and to to capture new use cases. And in particular, if you look at the situation right now where we have a uh, changing market, where we have a new technology opening up for new uh, market and business case. And we are very, very, very interested in finding new ways of utilizing our uh, technology and uh, finding ways how we can evolve our technology. And we believe that uh, interactions with startups uh, is kind of a both direct direction. We can help a startup, but the startup can also help us. So, so we, we very much uh, uh, appreciate uh, working with startups, getting new ideas, supporting them, and uh, to building a good momentum in that. And I have experience in working with the startups via the Mobility X Lab, as Sanna uh, was talking about, uh, and uh, where we initiate um, proof of concepts and. Uh, uh, creating con contacts and uh, give support in, uh, in f helping a startup to grow and finding a good business case. So I, I think that uh, we are very positive to that as a, as a company. We want to we want to be in the uh, have a leading position when it comes to new ideas and uh, evolving our technology. Great. Um, a great answer, and, and I can really see that the work Ericsson is doing, not only in Sweden, but also globally, is really inclusive and trying to build, uh, um, yeah, arenas for collaboration. Uh, one of those, uh, one of those I've visited in Montreal at Santec, uh, looking at the encore uh, development of, of 5G. Um, Sana, a question for you. Will the Batch 9 collaboration program be fully remote online or is there an ex uh, expectation that you will need to have an on-site uh, on presence? So back in the days we had startups flying over from Canada for an eight-minute pitch. Uh, that won't happen today. Uh, we do everything uh, remote. Um, working with the computers uh, is very good. Um, 
unless you need to sort of detach or attach something to a vehicle uh, that needs to, of course, be on site. But we expect everything to be uh, remote online. Uh, and we and yes, uh, and from from Petter there, does it cost anything to be a part of Mobility X Lab? So it doesn't cost anything. Um, we don't take any fee from Mobility X Lab. We are fully funded from our partner side, and the validation projects that are made within uh, Mobility X Lab context are paid projects, and that's uh, a business traction between uh, our partners and the startups. Great. Uh, thank you so much. And I see uh, that time is running out. Uh, what I want to end this note with or this event with is really that we will have more event events. Uh, use us, all of us here, um, Mobility X Lab, AI Suite and Business Suite and, and also access to Ericsson, to SEFT. We had the Volvo Group and Volvo Cars and Sensac present the last time. So we are really here to help you access your potential and future customers uh, in this ecosystem. What I also want to say is that, as I mentioned before, this is a monthly event series where we try to introduce new Swedish corporate players that are really innovative but need startups to drive this um, and still be competitive. So um, now we've been spending time together with Mobility X Lab for the last two months. And during April, we will have a focus on smart industry uh, instead and smart manufacturing. So we're really going over towards that in that direction after this. Uh, and um, Keep updated and uh, we will have the, the Startup Innovation Series uh, number three on the 20th of April. You will get an invite uh, through uh, on your email or via email. And with that, I, I wanna end with thank you so much. Thank you for the presenters. Thank you to all of you participants that uh, joined us today. If there's any questions, feel free to reach out either to me or to Sana about Mobility X Lab. And I hope to see you at the next event. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you very much, Peter. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much.